friends, this is Sanji, and I'm here to read another puzzle to you from the great Sherlock Holmes puzzle book by Dr. Gareth Moore. Last time I read to you a puzzle called The Tricky Testimony. I'm going to read that one, read the answer, and then I have a new one for you called The Crossroads. All right, let's get started. The Tricky Testimony. <clears throat> Scotland Yard were investigating a mugging that had taken place in Regent's Park. The victim, a Mr. White, had reported being attacked by a man wearing blue dungarees, pants, with paint on the front and a brown cap pulled low over his eyes. The attacker had taken some very valuable items from Mr. White, so a full-scale investigation was launched. A number of people who were known or seen to have been in the park were questioned. One witness reported seeing a man who matched this exact description. Cap, dungarees, paint stain, running out of the park towards Baker Street. Unfortunately, as the witness was behind the man, he obtained not even a glimpse of the man's face. When Holmes heard about this report, he frowned. I presume you held the witness for further questioning. No, we let him go, said Inspector Lestrade. He had nothing further to tell us. Nothing further, Holmes exclaimed. I should say your witness had a lot more to say, considering he lied in his testimony and was quite possibly involved in the crime. Why did Holmes think this? How did he know that he lied? And, why, and, and possibly could be involved? Hmm. What do you guys think? All right, so let's find that one. All right, the answer to a tricky testimony is this. If the witness had only seen the attacker from behind, he would not have been able to see the paint on the front of his pants or his dungarees. So the witness must either have lied in his testimony or already known in some other way that the attacker had paint on the front of his dungarees. Pretty clever, right? Pretty tricky. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can do the next one. It's called The Crossroads. Holmes and I were taking a carriage through an unfamiliar stretch of English countryside when we arrived at a crossroads. So crossroads, you don't know which way you're going. I mean, you come to a crossroads, you have to decide which way you're going. And in this case, they arrived at a crossroads. Moreover, some crude vandal had pushed over the marker indicating where each road led and discarded it into a nearby ditch. So we had no clue in which way our destination lay. Oh, what a bothersome, bothersome thing to do, I exclaimed, and our driver was in quite, quite an agreement. Now, Watson, there's no need to get heated, said Holmes. It's just a harmless prank. Harmless? We'll have to wait here for hours until someone comes along who can give us directions. That would be quite unnecessary. Holmes was right, of course. So how could we determine which way we ought to go? Okay, so this is how I think it is. There's a, there's a crossroad, so there's an X. So you're driving up and you've got to decide should you turn left or right or continue straight. I'm imagining that the sign is gonna be pointing the sign that somebody pulled out and, you know, cast aside is pointing in the directions of the roads. Okay, I think that might help us figure it out. Think about it. Think, how did he know? Um, and come back next time for the answer to the crossroads, and I'll have a new puzzle for you. Bye, friends.